I'm sick of trying to tell me how to live. That's how I'm hating to get my pictures on the gram. You better hope to never go and watch your man. I'm, this just gives me life. This gives me life. This is bad B energy. <laughs> it's setting the tone. It's just setting the tone. Of course, it never no, happened if the dick wasn't she tone the way that she does. Give her not only additional round of applause for the scene, ladies and gentlemen, but give her the status right there of what she deserves right now. Give it to the status. Queen. That's the queen oh. right here that we're dealing with. Absolute queen, absolute boss, just completely gives me life. No doubt with it giving you life, but also you giving life to how you're one of the best scribes out over in the land of England, doing your thing in a major way on many, many avenues, whether in the written stream or on the interviews that you've been doing, including the wonderful interviews with Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, and the many others on your box. Yes, that is an intro. That is an intro right there. Wow. I feel like you just, you just, I, I'm done now. <laughs> that is unreal. But yeah, I mean, you made me sound better than I am, but I mean, I'll take that. <laughs> You're rising in the game, doing your thing, and not only you doing your thing, but your beloved Fulham and, and that club, that club closest to Fulham, Brentford, who you had to let them know that once Fulham came back to the top flight, you was with your cottages. Break this mm -hmm. down to Fulham being in seventh place and Brentford being right near Ms. ILB. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, we got bragging rights this season because we already beat Brentford at Craven Cottage. That so true. that was the answer. And Alexander Mitrovic, you know, my favorite player, he got the last goal over Ivan Tony. He got the bragging He got the winning goal. So I know life is good as a Fulham fan right now. I'm feeling, you know, on cloud nine. We could, I could, I need to get my passport ready. We could be on a push for Europe. Who knows? We could be playing in, in Europe. I don't, I don't know. We're just dreaming big at the minute. I'm telling you, especially with how epic you keep it with your pre, with your post match written whole entire article to war. Well, I mean, could you have imagined you thinking that you could be going with the sun, covering Fulham in Europe in the first year back in Vermilion? Oh. It's just crazy. Like even like even being in the prem and doing well, I didn't even imagine it. Like even being back and just being a consistently good Premier League team, I never thought we could do it because before we got relegated, the time before that we got relegated. So mm -hmm. just to be like, you know, bringing it to Premier League teams is so good. And now, and I'm like, if I would ever cover a Fulham European game, that would just be like life complete, dream done. Like it would just be amazing. Like I wouldn't even mind where we got, who we played, whatever. Could be a random team that I'd never heard of. I'd just be, <laughs> I'd just be over the moon. <laughs> well, over the moon is how you probably felt when Fulham back in the day with my American homie Clint Dempsey mm -hmm. was in that. UEFA Cup Finals, that, that was when it was Europa League, the first year they, when they branded it as Europa League. But in that final, way back, what for you before this season was that proudest Fulham fan moment throughout the course of your life? Definitely. Like, it it goes down in history. Like, you you know, you you obviously know what it means to us because oh. every year... We we bring it up every year on, on the like date when it happened. We all remember it, and like my dad's never forgotten it. It's just like seeps through the history and the club and and families that support Fulham, and it just it's because Fulham's quite you know we're like little Fulham. We're seen as like Chelsea's little neighbours. Oh. Like, we went to a final of the Europa League, and it's just insane. And um, it's just such happy memories. But it feels like, like you say, this is the n the next season where we could be on the brink of something special again. How many years later now is that? Like, like over a decade. And so I'm just, yeah, it's it brings back memories of that, how well we're doing this season. Would you, considering you may have some Chelsea 
friends or whatnot, how much trash talking would you be doing if one of my <laughs> seasons in ends up a t- more on top of the table than Chelsea with a higher position in the table? What trash talking is ILB going to be doing with how she's always about the smoke? Honestly, I will be on absolute smoke. Not just with Chelsea, with all of the London clubs, particularly West Ham as well. Like, they have given me so much shit all season. Mm. And last time, last time when we got relegated, my West Ham fans, um, friends were, were texting me saying, you know, like laughing about it. And look how badly they're doing. So just to be doing it again, doing so much better than the bigger clubs, is just unreal. And I will be, they will be eating humble pie, but... Obviously, we have to see what happens at the end of the season because, as you know, you know about English football. The mm-hmm. bigger teams, they've got the bigger squads. They they can kind of, like, um, weather the storm of the fixtures at the end. So, hopefully, we can keep this going. But because I don't want to get say too much to, like, yet because my full of my words will come back to haunt me. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be on smoke at the end of the season. Let's just say that. Well, well you're going to be on smoke, but... That club, at least closest to you in terms of proximity besides Fulham, instead of Chelsea, Brentford, the Vs, with the season, the back-to-back season that they've had, and now in the top 10, right behind your cottages in that robbery, have those Brentford fans felt that you have went back to Fulham and have betrayed them? Have they been trying to talk smack towards you? How have you been dealing with the Brentford fan base and seeing what Brentford is doing right there? Well, because obviously with work, I cover Brentford a lot and I have to be neutral as a reporter. And I do actually respect what they're doing. Like, I really like the model of the club. They are actually really nicely run. Uh, they're very, like, they look after their fans. They love the community and things like that. But, um... You know, I think they've had to eat a bit of humble pie this season because they used to say Fulham were bottle jobs. You know, we'd bottle it. We'd never, we always broke to the last hurdle. We could never do it in the Prem. And in fairness to them, they did exactly what we wanted to do. They stayed up in the Prem. So there's a lot of things to admire about Brentford. But, I mean, they got to watch their backs this season because we've got Mitrovic firing. You know, he did it when it mattered in front of Ivan Tony. And I don't know if you remember when we did them, um, Ivan Tony mocked Mitrovic's celebration. Yes. And I just thought that was so cheeky of him. And Mitrovic got the last laugh. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. And I think they're watching their backs and they've realised that actually we're a really well-run team now. We weren't under Scott Parker, but now with Marco Silva, who knows what could, what could happen. And just any interviews with Marco Silva and how he has really gotten this club back to at least a height of being no worse than a mid-table club, but just having the seventh place whole result and how he's built his own image back up after it didn't go well for him at Everton. How's been your interactions with Sir Silva and just how he has been with his mentality towards you all? Yeah, yeah, you definitely, clearly you know what you're talking about. Like Marco, obviously, like, you know, he had a point to prove. And um, <laughs> yeah, you're you're a fantastic reporter. And he had a he had a he like you say he had a point to prove. Um, he was at Everton and, and kind of Watford. He left them, and and I think he's proved that point. I think he's actually and he is a really good manager. Um, you know he he what what the best thing about Marco is is that he gets the players on side and he's got the best out of people like Tim Ream. You know Tim Ream. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's got them. And he's got someone like Tim, you know, just playing the best of his life now at the age of what? How old is he? 35? 35. 35. It's crazy. Yep, 35 um, years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, so I just think he yeah, needs to be so much credit for his player management and his people skills. In in press conferences, I'm actually talking to him tomorrow. Um, He's quite, like, focused and serious, but he'll have a little giggle now and then. And... um. Yeah, we get along really well, to be fair, because obviously I'm a Fulham fan, so I just want to report good things about the club. So we get on pretty well. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a happy days in the camp at the minute. But he's being really realistic as well. He's like, don't get too ahead of ourselves. We just need to stay in this league to start off with. And no doubt with you mentioning that, the, v- the victory that Fulham got over Brentford at the beginning of the season, with you also providing one of those spicy ILB whole entire 
whole snatch right up. I mean, Earl, you you laid in on that one with Ivan Tony saying Alexander Mitchell has got the last last over Ivan Tony with a late winner in the first third print meeting, as you mentioned, with Tony cheekily mocking his goal celebration only for Mitchell to do that. Can you talk about was that the spiciest thing that you have ever written? Or yeah. any spicy things that you've written, is there something that's even more spicy than that? No, no, that is the spiciest thing I've ever written, honestly. And it felt so much better because I'm a fan. And it was like the last kick of the game. It seemed like we just bottled it against Brentford again. And then Mitrovic gets the winner after he was mocked by his rival, Ivan Tony. Like, it was just like... It was like I was watching a film, like it wasn't real. It was just ah, oh, it was breathtaking. It was one of the most special moments at Craven Cottage ever. But like you say, I'm a reporter. I had to kind of keep my head like focused. I had to write my report. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just on cloud nine. I was I was just on cloud nine. I think we celebrated hard that night. There was definitely a few sore heads the next day, but yeah, it was unreal. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not only with that write up. But also, when we met in terms of seeing that you really are a published book author right now, give her a round of applause for that. Give her a round of applause for that, to be able to do that at such still, the young developing age that you are with it. Where did that love for sports journalism, sports writing come from for you to be in this position of how you're rising out in this field? Thank you. I well, I I I just love sport from an early age. I remember playing football as a kid in in school, right. and I always felt like it was kind of I don't know. Women weren't given equal treatment. I could feel it from a young age. I could feel like the boys were getting um, more beneficial treatment than the girls, and I was like, this isn't right. So I think I kind of merged my love for sport and I love writing together. And I remember watching like the World Cup and things like that. And I think it was like the, the South Africa World Cup really got me hooked. I loved like players like Mesut Ozil and things like that. And I was like, I really want to make this into a job. I want to cover big sporting events. Who doesn't, right? Like you've done it. Like it's just such a buzz. Um, and so, yeah, I just put the two together and I just worked my ass off. And then, yeah, straight out of uni, um, I started off with the Sun and got like an apprenticeship thing to kind of be like one of their first female sports rep reporters. So, I think like highlighting issues about like women and sport is really important to me. So I'm glad I kind of did that with the book. And not only that, you mentioned the Sun just like it's um this is a regular paper. This is <laughs> the Sun girl that you got this whole position with. Give a queen. the full queen status right there. Give queen. it a, give it a full queen recognition <laughs> on that to earn that whole place with it. How's been the vibe in terms of working in there? And one thing I saw is that I'm really like happy to see whenever you have any notable interviews, at least real office support for you there. How's been the vibe so far over at the yeah. center? So like in England, in England, like in the, I don't know if it's the same in the States, but in like the, we've got like tabloid newspapers who, and everyone thinks they're quite like gritty, difficult places to work. And I'm sure they can be, but actually everyone was very supportive of me. And like, it's obviously very male dominated because it's sport, but everyone was really supportive. There's a good vibe. We get really amazing people into interview. Like you say, like AJ in the office, like everyone's crowding around. Like it's some fun, really fun things happen there. And it's just a really special building. And upstairs is talk sport as well. So we get really cool guests in there as well. So the vibe is good. The vibe is really good. It's good fun. It's just good energy, a lot going on. You can be in Vienna one week and then Newcastle the next. There's just loads going on. And, and that's the fun of the job, isn't it? No doubt. And the fun of the job is how you've really become quite the interviewer, having a whole level House of the Dragon inside a moment there with Tyson Fury. Shout out all the way to Olivia Cook. Shout out to Emma Darcy as well because of you having that moment with the Drake moment. Was that spontaneous or were you just thinking we planning that right there to have that awesome no, moment? It, it was spontaneous. I didn't think he'd come up with such a good answer. Like, he literally came up with the most cutting British answer ever. And it just worked brilliantly. Like, it was so good. Um, he's just so effortlessly funny. Like, he just has one-liners, which are just, like, hilarious. And his accent is amazing. He's such a, like, 
typically British man and he's so funny and he's so relatable as well. Like he obviously loves a drink and you wouldn't think a professional boxer like would like to have a pint of beer or whatever. And he does. And he's just so funny. And I think that's why people love him over here because you know, they can just imagine themselves going out for a pint of beer with him at the local pub. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even over here and no matter, you know, any other stuff that he can say, but thing is just genuinely when you get to meet him, he really has that jovial character and literally larger than life. Like, I mean, literally and figuratively, you know, that could be the case. Yeah. They'll say about him, you know, with that. But you got your whole larger than life personality with that. And, and what you're doing with your box, so not only with boxing, but you really being so vested in MMA to the point you got that hoodie on, you got your Brighton whole entire level up here with that. But let me ask you first, you go you go all the way up to Brighton in terms of having this level of, of sparring. Wow. Did, 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 London? Let me, how did that come to be? Right, right, right. So actually, my mom lives in near Brighton. So like, I when I come and see her, I can go and train over there. And they've got a really cool gym there. It's called Kenshiro's, which is this. And um, the vibe is just very good there. They're really nice. There's really cool people there. Um, and yeah, the training is hard. It is really hard, but it's going good. I'd like to have my own fight, I think, this year. I did like a kind of practice one recently, and I want to have a proper fight maybe around April time. So I need to get my ass in gear. I need to stop, drink stop drinking, no smoking, no stripping. <laughs> And maybe I could have a fight. <laughs> First of all, that that is exclusive that she's dropping there by also mentioning casually the whole level of dripping with that. That's how real she keeps it, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> all the way. But you 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 definitely want to definitely go down and do it because especially having like a good colleague, Laura Senko, over on this side, and how like not only media, but in all how she's fought in the past, you know, about that. This is this is going yeah. down. This is going to go down for you. You want to? I think, like you say, like it complements your work because I think if you're covering mixed martial arts or whatever, I think people would take you more seriously if you actually begin fighting, because you, you've done it, you've stepped in there, and you've gone through a training camp or whatever. So, I think it will complement the the journalism as well. To be honest, like you said, when did you come in uh, the first mixed martial arts like fight or personality? What what made you love? MMA all the way like you do and how knowledge knowledgeable you are you know with your coverage so like I it's interesting because when I met you and we did that that press conference I felt like you were the one person that asked a really interesting fun different question you did and that's what drew me to you because I was like and that's why I remembered your name I, I wanted to know who you were and stuff and um, we often get that in the UK. We just get like one person asked a really good question, but it's just with football and it can be quite boring otherwise. So I was like, I'm getting a little bit bored of football. What else is out there? And the MMA scene is just like crazy. Like the fighters have so much energy. They've got really interesting stories. And I interviewed Leon Edwards quite, um, quite early in my career. And obviously he's become UFC champ. And he was just had such an interesting story. Like his dad was involved in crime, involved in gangs, and and he was kind of helping out his nan and things like that. And I just think you you can kind of you're drawn to these stories and it's really interesting. And so I think I just went kicked off from there really. And I've not really looked back and I much prefer doing the boxing and the MMA coverage. Because football over here has become really difficult to cover. I don't know if it's the same with you guys, but it's like you're so strict. It's really strict to cover. So yeah, no, I'm enjoying the MMA stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's something where I would have think that you've been rocking with it for like 10, 12 years straight with it because you are right there, like having that great interview with Leon, having the great interviews that you've had after fights over there with the local fights over there. That is something that you are really vested in all the way. So if I had to ask you, who have, who, who is your favorite MMA fighter of all time, and you can say both men and women if you want to uh, have at least two separate categories for that, but who for you is that MMA person that you love the most before we get into the full boxing array of things? Before, like, not, not to interview, just to watch? Oh, just to watch in general, yeah. 
I have to admit, I was always a massive Nate Diaz fan. That's right. Like, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I always loved him. Like, I think he's done a lot for the sport and he's not given credit for it because it was at the similar time to when Connor was kind of hit, making his epic rise in, in the sport. And Nate, his personality kind of goes under the rug a little bit. Whereas actually, he has said some hilarious things that have grown the sport. Nope. His character's grown the sport, you know, smoking a spliff when he's doing his open workout. Like, he he's hilarious, but he's TV gold. And, yeah, I just think he's so entertaining. Um, In terms of the women, I just, like, I love, I just am in awe watching loads, like, all of them. Like, Joanna Jang Chechek, she's insane. Um, So many of them, Meatball Molly at the minute, she's doing mm-hmm. big things, although she just lost. But, like, all of them, I'm just in awe of the women, because I think they're just such good role models. Um, So, yeah, no, just, just like, I just really enjoy watching the sport, and I think these women are incredible. And then with how you've gotten further into boxing, the way that you have, of course, interviewing Tyson and Glute, interviewing Anthony Joshua, with him having his charm all the way. <laughs> AK, definitely has no doubt him getting that charm session <laughs> with you with it. Who for you has been your favorite boxer to watch? And then you can also talk about in terms of those interviews with that, but who for you has been your favorite boxer day ILB? So my favorite boxer is Vasily Lomachenko. Right. Um always been a big fan I just I love his style he's super small and like I just find it really like I just I think it's amazing what you can do and be yeah be so short and kind of stocky and and what he does with that and I also love his training techniques like he does fishing and you know swimming in icy rivers and he's just very like true to his Ukrainian roots I love that um to interview, I think probably the AJ one, it's got to be like, he was such a flirt. He was such a flirt. Like, I, it's not on the clip. So this is an exclusive bit of information that you're getting. Oh. I know, I know. But when I sat down, he was like, you have the most beautiful blue eyes. And I was like, oh my God, Anthony Joshua is flirting with me. What do I do? <laughs> like, F- women would kill to be in my position right now. <laughs> That gets this level a wonderful sound effect from AJ. Oh, that's an all right there with it. With, <laughs> you know, he's at least just a, a quality guy at the very least. And that was a moment of quality from him with that. And also him being factually accurate like a journalist. So good for him. The state that matched <laughs> I like it. <laughs> about it. No doubt about it. Well, this is the thing that I want to ask you because of you. Being so vested in boxing, uh, do you have a pound for pound top five right now? Or if, if you have a, just a pound for pound top box in the world, you mentioned Loma, you mentioned the Matrix, but Shakur Stevenson, he could be facing in our area the good search Shakur Stevenson, rising, doing his thing, mean his own prodigy. Yet, God, of course, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, and Tyson Fury being in that discussion. Naoya, anyway. In how sensation he is. You got a top five, a top one? It, what, at the minute? Or like... Oh, well, you know what? We can go in the direction of all time. It, make it even easier. Uh, it's actually, I think it's... And just men. Well, you, you, can, you, can, uh, you can include, you know, Layla Ali. You can include Miss Ward because of how epic she was as her own boxer. Back in the day. I actually don't think I can. Who's your who's your top five? Top five? All right. For um at least all time, I can say is definitely Ali for sure. Yeah, yeah. Roy Jones Jr. And not because I'm a Jones, but when Roy was doing his thing, he was just that sensational. You know, yep. he, he truly was that type of person. You needed to see him like when it was going down with how great he was. Um yeah. the next for me, definitely. Sugar Ray Leonard with how he was doing his thing in a major way, made it happen. It, it was sensational. You know, I, I got to give love to actually Lennox Lewis. People really underrate Lennox for how mm-hmm. really a major talent he was and how he did his thing. So he gets that level right there. And, you know, number five, it, you know, this could all go in different directions, everything. But between, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson, Rocky Marciano back in the day, this is going all the way back, being a full Boston nerd like that, that way. But 
that will be my whole top five in terms of like all time, at least in the list. I like that. I want to, I'm glad I asked you a question because I was asked this question on the radio the other day and I found it really difficult to ask. So I feel like I'm absorbing information from people like you, you know what you're talking about. And I feel like I'll come to my own conclusion, but I can't, I don't know what my finalized list is yet. And I don't want to confirm it yet. <laughs> no problem. Well, at least in terms of the interviews, it'll be both Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, one, two, which you, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and by the way, for me, in terms of like my pound for pound top five now, it would be both Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence one two. Hopefully, they actually you know fight, but who knows with this sport? And why we love MMA because we can at least get that at least most of the time. Yeah. And then we'll be in your way, um, Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury. So who may fight yeah. themselves? So yeah, you know. No, I think you made an important point there. That's the one thing about being a boxing fan is that that's why MMA is on the rise is because we, we're getting it more consistently, these big matchups. Mm -hmm. Whereas in boxing, that's why it's, oh, it's, I think it's lose. Some fans are getting a bit frustrated because, it, you know, it, it, these fights aren't happening. And then they're happening in Saudi Arabia where no one can watch it live. So, it's a difficult one, isn't it? You you kind of fall out of love a little bit with it, and that's why I like MMA a lot because, you know, they're going to be in London in March, is it? I think no. so. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. No doubt. Well, let me ask you this: as we have our final sessions with the great Isabella T. Barca here on Overall Overtime, first to twenty twenty three, you got Megan Thee Stallion part of this whole playlist. So, who for you is your favorite? music artists of all time and you got a top five who's your favorite music artist of all time and right now in your mind top five mm -hmm. that's really hard that's really okay clash the band the clash because they remind me they're a british band um they really remind me of fulham they really I remind me of my dad loyal's a, loyal's a clash I love, the loyalty yeah. is well with her right there that's amazing I love the clash. And then I'm going to say, I am going to say Megan the Stallion because I think what she represents for women is just incredible. She's just an icon. You know, she lets women be sexy and like ha be how they want to be without any questions asked. And it's kind of a bit of a middle finger up to the men that like criticize women because of this, you know? Um, fuck, five. Shit, that's hard. You can include some UK. You you can you can you can include some UK artists of need. Oh, I'm don't know if you know them, but um the Gypsy Kings, they're um they're uh, like a Spanish. They're actually French, but they're a Spanish band. They're just beautiful, and I just think they're just they're just pretty and like emotional to listen to. There's mm -hmm. three. Um, who do I listen to a lot of? I feel like with some music, it's just about being nostalgic, isn't it? It's like being at house parties and what did you listen to? Because you have a wide variety of tastes, as people are going to see with the outro song, by the way. I know. I have a very, what's the word, eclectic? Is it? It's like mm -hmm. different tastes. Um, okay. Maybe, obviously, Jay-Z I'd have to put on there. Um, who knows what the outro track is? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> but um, just love his music. And then... Maybe The Cure, they're a band. Um, they do some cool stuff. But that's a real mixture right there. <laughs> real mixture representing how real this one keeps it in terms of how not only the music says, but just that awesome personality. Final question that we got to ask you, Al, because we'll do this certainly even more another time and also extra great stuff. But what is on your bucket list? as a sport journalist and a music journal and just a journalist in general that you want to have accomplished maybe this year or in the next few years with how you're rising out here? Very good question. I want to be on TV. I've not been on TV properly yet. So I want to be on TV, Sky Sports, BBC, ITV, get up. BT. No, actually BT. Get, it now. Yeah, get, get me on there. Um, and I will be on, I want to be on like UFC on the BT channel, but that wouldn't happen this year, but it will eventually. Oh, we, we, we're going to talk about that on Lolo because of having some UFC contests and come on now, mm -hmm. you deserve that and then some all the way for how you're rising That's in good. the game. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> in that outro song that we were alluding to for a great taste. Give it to her right there. Hey. Hey.
bad mood, son of a bitch. We are out of here for all this time. This brings me out here. Hey, 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 h